Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio with K0PIR in my YouTube channel. I've got RDOP WinLink Express working and I've been sending emails to people that I know through HF. And man, is this great. I'll show you how I set it up. Okay, well the first thing you want to do is go to the winlink.org website. Here's the address up here. And uh, what you want to do is create an account. Go in and create that first. And then once you get that set up, you can go to the download area. And go to user programs. And you want to download the latest WinLink Express. That's this zip file. And once you get it downloaded, you'll want to extract it and run the installation file. It's pretty easy to get installed. It's a little bit different to get going though. I'll show you how I have it set up for the ICOM 7610. When you open it up, you'll come to WinLink Express, and the first thing you'll have to do is set up your call sign. And I'll go in here, the WinLink Express setup. You'll set up your call sign. You'll put your password in that you use for the account on the website. Put in a password recovery email. And uh, make sure that you put in the, uh, the grid square that helps the program calculate the distance between stations. And I registered uh, WinLink Express because I like it so much. You don't have to to use it, but I would uh, certainly recommend it. So that's the uh, WinLink Express properties or the setup. Another place you want to take a look at is contacts. And you can enter in contacts. You can import them. And I went ahead and imported a list that I have for South Dakota hams. And one thing that you want to be careful of when you enter in an address, the mail server, you want to select that to none. If it's left blank or uh, if it has, uh, if you put in RMS or CMS, I found that it didn't work. I had to set the mail server to none on all of them. Next thing you can do is go over and, and create an email and we'll just click on enter a new new message and you want to uh, send it as a WinLink message. I'm going to go ahead and create one here for you. I'll select this uh, ham right there at the top. You can add an attachment to it if you want or you can just send a quick email and post it to the outbox. Oh, I didn't specify a subject. I've got two in the outbox here. I can go back and edit it. And then post it to the outbox again, and it put the subject in there. I've got a weather report that's ready to go. So after you create an email, what you want to do is go over and open a session, and I'm using RDOP. A lot of people have been using uh, Win, uh, Winmore, and Winmore works fine. It's just slower. I've been using RDOP because it's a little bit faster, a little bit more robust. I'll uh, put it a link to the description of RDOP below. You can go to the website and read about it. So the next thing you want to do is open up a session. And I'm going to click that. And it may ask you to set up a radio. I'll go through the settings for my radio. Settings. And we'll go to the RDOP TNC first. And the RDOP capture device for my ICOM 7610 is a USB audio codec. You might be using an ICOM 7300 or another radio. Or you might be using a, a signal link sound card. You'll just want to set that up. And the session bandwidth, I've been using 2000. And the drive level, I've set to 90. I don't want my ALC when I'm transmitting to go more than a quarter or definitely not more than a third of the scale. I'll show you in the video uh, later on. You can, you can adjust the drive level. I've set it as low as 70. And it works just fine. Works fine for 90 for me right now. Let's go to settings and the radio setup. 
and I've got my ICOM uh, 7610 set up. I had to use the ICOM 7600 because the 7610 is not in there. And that's okay. I just changed the ICOM address to 98. That's the address for the 7610. On the radio control port, I'm using my CIV cable. I'm not using the USB. And that's just my personal preference. You can choose uh, you can choose your USB cable if you want. I've got two for the uh, 7610. It gives you two virtual serial COM ports. But this is a cable that I have. It's, it's extra that I use uh, quite often for various programs. The maximum speed is 19.2. Down here under the push to talk port, I use the ICOM 7600 same there and that works fine i've tried a couple of others in here i've tried uh having it set to external as civ and it just didn't work for me so after you do that the next thing you want to do is take a look at this little deal it pops up and this is the rdop win win link virtual tnc and it may open up, it may uh, minimize when it opens up, but you'll find it down in your taskbar. Let's go and take a look at the setup here. I'll go to File and Virtual TNC. And it, it's got a little message up here at the top. I've noticed that when I take the check mark off of there and I save it, and then I open it up again, the check mark's back. So. I uh, just can't get rid of that. You don't have to send a CWID on these. It's uh, you know perfectly fine not to. And let's see. I don't think I changed anything in here. But you want to take a look at this. The FEC frame rate. This is 4PSK.500.100. And the ARQ bandwidth 2000 max. The neat thing about RDOP is it'll negotiate the the right bandwidth. You, the server will will tell your client what to use. And let's see the uh, the busy detector. I've got mine set to one. I was getting a lot of false positives when it was set to five. So you can adjust it. You can even turn it off uh, by setting it to zero. But I've been using one, and that works fine. I normally just look at the waterfall to see if there's anybody in there uh, that's transmitting or I listen to the radio I can hear it so then you want to save it to the INI files I'll take that off of there and I'll take that off right there and save it and we'll see what happens okay you see the waterfall here let's go back in and take a look see if it saved it and uh, well I, I was able to get that one off of there so that worked but uh, it, the start to TNC minimize it still checked off so uh, the busy detector that's an important one and the drive level you can set it here so let's go to the next one there is an optional radio setup and I see that it's uh, grayed out right now and uh, I don't think uh, anything uh, over here is uh, too terribly important let's take a look at the uh, the radio okay you can see I got my camera over here and I'm gonna don't hear anybody on right now I'm gonna set the, uh, the power level I've used uh, as little as f 10 watts and as much as a hundred watts and I don't hear anybody on right now so I'm, a, I'm just gonna test it I'm gonna go over here to send and I'm gonna send a 50 baud two-tone test and I want to check the ALC on it double check my power I'll set it to 30 that's what I use on PSK a lot of the time. I want to make sure that my amplifier is off and my antenna is tuned. 
Well, this antenna is not great for this uh, low in frequency. I've got a pretty high SWR, it's 2.5 to 1, but it's been working. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to send that test and we're going to watch the ALC. All right, that's perfect. Uh, I like that. And it'll stop by itself. Now, if you want to adjust that, the ALC, if you got it too high without playing with your windows sound or your radio audio output you can go in and change the drive so let's go in here to the virtual TNC setup and the drive level if I want to lower it I can go down to 70 and that's been pretty good for me I, I'll save it and we'll try that again went behind there Oops. Okay, I changed it to 70, so let's send that test again and watch the ALC. And I don't have any ALC, and you see the power drop quite a bit. I should be getting about 30 watts out. So let's go back into there, and I'll set it back to where I had it. It's 90, save it, and we'll run that test again. And there you go. It's about about up to 25 watts. I have it set to 30%, and that's fine. It's not completely accurate or synced between those two. 30% doesn't necessarily mean 30 watts. But the ALC is just fine. So that's it for the setup. The next thing I'd want to do is take a look at the uh, RDOP WinLink session. And we're going to take a look at the channel selection. You can update the table through the internet. I get that not responding every so often. But it's downloading. And it's updating the RMS channels. And the one at the top is usually the best the path quality is 54 well the second and the third or fourth are the same right uh, path reliability is a little bit different but the one at the top is usually the best one so you want to select a channel and I just double click on it and it changes frequency my radio is connected to the software so you can see that the radio changed frequency. I'm on 40 meters. I'm going to hit the tuner. And then I'm going to take a look at the waterfall. And I don't hear anything on there. So I've got my message. It's ready to go. The email. Got my power set, and on the radio I have the uh, noise blanker, noise reduction turned off, and I'm going to set the AGC to fast, and my attenuator, I've tried to use it a little bit because of the noise that I have. The bands haven't been that good, and uh, got a lot of noise sometimes, so I'll use the uh, attenuator on the 7610 because it's adjustable if I hold in the soft button you'll see I can bring it up and adjust it in 3 dB increments normally I have, I have it off it's set to USB D1 so the radio is ready to go I can change the bandwidth after I start transmitting or start receiving it's at 3.6K right now. And I can change it to 2K, which is, is pretty good. 3.6, it, it's been working fine for me there too. But I can change it as low as 500. 
if I push the filter button, you can't see it, but it's over on the far right. If I push the filter button, I've got the bandwidth set to 600 hertz. And the transmission and the receive on this is usually 500, 500 hertz, so 600 is just fine. I hear somebody in there now. So somebody's using the channel right now, or the frequency. So I won't send, but if I was going to go ahead and send, if the channel was free, I'd just hit the start right up here in the menu, and it would start the transmission. I've got a few samples of sending and receiving. I'm going to put that at the end of the video. But if you have any questions or comments, please make them below. I found that this is pretty reliable. I've had some trouble, but that was user error. And I've shown you how I've set it up and I've gotten really reliable sending and receiving email over HF. I've used this on my Elecraft KX2 and 10 watts into a wire that's up 20 feet. The wire runs about 120 feet down my backyard, the length of my yard. But it's only up about 20 feet. You can see somebody in there right now. But it's only up about 20 feet. I've been using 10 watts and sending messages with the Elecraft KX2. Okay, well keep watching and I'll show you what it looks like sending and receiving a email over HF. Okay, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Also, tell your friends. 73 and good DX.